Our lab at IIT Hyderabad is interested in understanding how diseases can damage our body, how certain chemicals can introduce damage to our biological systems, how they can cause toxicity. We think it's important to understand because the knowledge we get actually helps us to prevent the damage. We can protect ourselves with that knowledge. So in our recent study, we investigated the chemical triclosan and we wanted to know if this chemical is potent enough to damage our nervous system. Triclosan is a synthetic lipid soluble chemical compound having broad spectrum antimicrobial properties. Because of its antimicrobial properties, it was initially introduced to use in hospitals. However, now it is widely used in household and personal care products such as toothpaste, deodorant, etc. Triclosan came under surveillance when it was detected in human fluids such as blood, urine and even milk. We, are so, we were surprised to see that when FDA regulated triclosan for the use of non-consumer products but no such regulation exists still for India. We also noted that there are not much studies reporting uh, adverse effects of triclosan in brain even though it was also detected in brain. So we got curious whether this chemical can affect or it can be contributing to brain related disorders which are obviously on the rise. So in our lab, we use zebrafish animal model to investigate the adverse effects of triclosan. Zebrafish is a preferred animal model for toxicity studies. They are small in size and therefore economic to maintain. They produce transparent embryos that are suitable for the microscopy studies. Remarkably, many of the genes and critical pathways are highly conserved between humans and zebrafish. We saw that in our experiments, triclosan caused damage to the nervous system at concentrations which were actually 500 times lower than the allowed limit. We were surprised that at these nominal concentrations, triclosan was already causing damage to the structure and function of neurons. So the question we asked was, how was triclosan actually doing it? Because this remains still to be unknown. What we did is we used a biomarker of neurotoxicity. It's an enzyme acetylcholinesterase. It is present in brain, very important for brain function. So our results showed that triclosan at high concentrations can actually directly bind to this enzyme and impair its function. However, if triclosan is present in low amounts, it can also cause damage to this enzyme indirectly. How? It was actually increasing the oxidative stress in the cell. It was increasing the amount of reactive oxygen species. And this reactive oxygen species was actually damaging the function of acetylcholinesterase. In our most recent experiment, we uh, incubated zebrafish with an antioxidant melatonin because previously we saw that it is the oxidative stress of triclosan. So when we did that, we found that Zebrafish was protected from the adverse effects of triclosan, meaning we could protect ourselves by the use of an antioxidant. So this is a remarkable finding that we have the opportunity now to protect ourselves from the chemicals like triclosan, which are all around us. We need more epidemiological studies actually involving human subjects in India. We need to sample more human fluids to see actual consumption of triclosan. This information is unavailable in literature. We need to find this through epidemiological studies, particularly in India, that how much are we actually exposed to.